everyone, welcome back to Cars and Zebras. Today I have another featured drag race, so I sure hope that you enjoy it. If you do find it entertaining, make sure that you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel because I do post these videos regularly, and also make sure to share it with your friends so they can enjoy it as well. I do appreciate you watching, and with that said, let's check out our featured drag race. This is a 1970 Ford Torino Cobra, but it's not just any regular run-of-the-mill Cobra. This one is very special, and I'm going to explain it to you guys, but just hang in there. I know I get a little long-winded sometimes, but trust me, this car is worth the wait because it is absolutely amazing. But let's jump back to the car. As I mentioned, this one is special because it is a super Cobra Jet. But to truly understand how special this car is, we have to talk about all the packages that were available. So let's start with the base Torino Cobra. It came with a 429 cubic inch Thunder Jet engine featuring two bolt mains, hydraulic lifters, and a 10 and a half to one compression ratio. Overall, it was rated 360 horsepower, so not too shabby. But then for 160 bucks, you could upgrade to a Cobra Jet engine, and that had a 700 CFM quadrajet carburetor, an 11.3 to one compression ratio, and now it was rated 370 horsepower, so things are starting to get a little more interesting. But this car is even better yet because it is a Super Cobra Jet. And I already know what you're asking, it's Cars and Zebras. How did this car turn into a Super Cobra Jet? Well, it all started with the drag pack option. And if you checked that box, it automatically turned this car into the absolute monstrous Super Cobra Jet. And you got a lot of cool things with the drag pack, so let me list them out for you guys. I'm going to do this real quick, so hang in there. <coughs> you got 4-bolt mains, a heavy-duty balance, crankshaft, forged aluminum pistons, 11.3 to 1 compression ratio, a high-lift, solid-lifter cam, heavy-duty connecting rods, a high-volume oil pump, unique cylinder heads, a high-rise intake manifold, header style exhaust manifolds, a 780 CFM Holley carburetor, an external oil cooler, 391 gears were standard, and now it was rated at 375 horsepower at 5,400 RPM and 450 pound-feet of torque at 3,400 RPM. Not to mention that this car was optioned even further with a 430 gear and a Detroit locker. Uh, 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 uh. And how much do you think that drag pack cost back in 1970? It was $207. $207! For heaven's sake, an AM FM radio was a $214 option! Alright, let's all relax you guys, let's take a deep breath. <sighs> and let's talk about transmissions. The standard transmission in the Torino Cobra, which our car features, is the four-speed top loader. And you could only get a close ratio, unlike previous years where you could get a wide ratio four-speed. For 1970, sorry, it's either the close ratio four-speed or you gotta go to the C6 automatic, which was gonna cost you another $39. As I already mentioned, destroying the rear tires in this car is a 430 gear with a Detroit locker, and these cars were pretty chunky. Curb weight was 3,900 pounds. This car is coming in at 4,122 pounds. So at the pure stocks, this is actually the second heaviest car. And what's the heaviest car at the pier stocks, you might be asking? Well, it's another 1970 Torino Super Cobra Jet. Now this is where things get really interesting, and that is the production numbers for the 1970 Ford Torino. In total, there were 407,000 Ford Torinos produced in 1970. But if we break that down to Torino Cobras, there were only 7,675. And if we go a little bit deeper yet, Super Cobra Jet, drag pack cars, there were only 241. You guys want to guess how many of those were the four-speed cars? 125. So this Torino Super Cobra Jet with a four-speed is only one of 125 cars. The price of a Torino Cobra started at $3,270. To get the drag pack, that was another $207 bringing the total to $3,477 in its cheapest form. 
Accounting for inflation, that would be about 23,000 bucks today, making this car one of the best drag racing bargains in 1970. However, prices today are just a little bit different. If you can find a great example of a well-documented Super Cobra Jet Torino, it's going to run you at least seventy dollars to $80,000. Original testing at Motor Trend in 1970 showed a 0-60 to 60 of 5.8 seconds and a quarter mile of 13.99 seconds at 101 miles per hour. Now keep in mind, that was a Super Cobra Jet with a 391 gear. Of course, this one has 430 gears. And I forgot to mention this earlier, but the 429 in this car is not the same as the Boss 429, but it was rumored that a few Torino Super Cobra Jets snuck out of the factory with the Boss 429, so that would be extremely rare. But enough talk about the Torino Super Cobra Jet. Let's see its opponent. This is a 1973 Pontiac Firebird Formula, and yes, it features the Super Duty 455 engine. Oh, yeah! And I'm sure all the Firebird fans out there already know how rare this car is, but for everybody else, make sure that you pay attention, because this car is just so spectacular and absolutely awesome. But we're jumping ahead of ourselves a little bit here, so let's get back to our usual Cars and Zebras formula. <laughs> but let's just dive right into that Super Duty 455 because it has a lot of upgrades compared to the regular old run-of-the-mill 455. And I'm gonna run through these just like I did the Super Cobra Jet, so put on your seatbelts. It featured a reinforced block with four bolt mains, forged steel connecting rods, a high output oil pump, an aggressive cam, swirl polished valves, better flowing intake manifold and exhaust manifolds, an 800 CFM Rochester Quadrajet carburetor, forged aluminum pistons, high flow round port heads. Oddly enough, it still ran a cast crank, but with a 5700 RPM redline, it really wasn't a breaking point for the car. And also oddly enough, the shaker hood is for show only, as they do have a blocking plate in them. And remember, this is 1973, so unleaded gas was mandated, so compression ratios were really starting to suck, and this one comes in at 8.4 to 1. All said and done, even with that compression ratio, Pontiac put out a monster, making 290 net horsepower at 4,000 RPM and 395 pound-feet of torque at 3,600 RPM. Most of these cars came with the automatic transmission because it was a no-cost extra and that was the only way that you could get air conditioning. But take a look at this one. It features the four-speed manual. So there's a manual transmission in this Firebird formula equipped with the Super Duty 455. Ooh, is that rare, you guys? Oh, this is such a rare car. But more on that later, let's talk rear gear ratios. The standard was a 342 gear. If you had an automatic with air conditioning, that dropped to a 308. Ooh. This car is optioned up to a 373. Curb weight was 3,760 pounds. This car is coming in at 3,838 pounds. And pricing back in 1973 for the base model formula car was $3,276. If you wanted that Super Duty 455, it was gonna cost you 675 bucks. So in its cheapest, you could pick this car up for about $3,951, which would be about $23,000 today, adjusting for inflation. So nearly identical to our 1970 Torino Super Cobra Jet. Original testing at Car and Driver in 1973 showed a 0 to 60 of 5.4 seconds and the quarter mile in 13.7 seconds at 103 miles per hour, making this one of the quickest cars of 1973. But let's finish up with production numbers for this car because it is unbelievable. In 1973, there were only 43 Firebird formulas that had the Super Duty 455. If you break that down, do you know how many cars had the four-speed manual? Ten. Ten cars had the four-speed. There were only ten, and if you factor in colors and options, 
This car is one of one, probably. I mean, oh my god, you guys. I think I need a paper bag. I'm starting to hyperventilate just a little bit right now. And then, good luck finding one of these for sale. I mean, six figures, pretty easily. But, you know, really cool car, and I'm curious to see what it does on the drag strip. But, hold on, wait, wait a minute. Did he just do what I thought he did? I thought I was the only person out there that closed hoods like that. Again, thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. Please make sure that you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future Drag Race videos. And of course, I'll see you at the next one.